Okay, um, 8.2 is called Areas in a Plane. And in 8.2, you're going to learn how to find the area between two curves. Um, I just want to start again. Once again, I just like to tell you that underneath the antiderivative, the integral sign, there's the derivative, or this is the velocity. When you antiderive, you found you can find the initial position plus the displacement will give you the final position. This this will give you the displacement and they'll usually give you the initial position. But this will give you the displacement in there. Another thing that they will help you is it might give you the area or it might give you um, the distance traveled. It might give you the total distance traveled. It, you're going to find your position, um, how many of something. If they ask you on the test how many, all of this means to anti-derive. Okay, we're going to find the area between two curves. So I'm just going to make an f of x curve. And down here is the g of x curve. And we are going to integrate from these two spots, from A to B. So when you find the area between two curves, the formula is this. You integrate from A to B, the top, the top curve, the top curve minus the bottom curve. And you are doing this already, like this one right here. And I drew a line down. And let's say we integrated from zero to three. And this curve was like, looks like uh, x to the third. Um, the top curve is that x to the third, and the bottom curve could have been x equals zero. So you've been doing this. Zero to three, the top curve is x to the third minus the bottom curve, which is zero, dx. So you had a top curve and you had a bottom curve, but the bottom curve was always the x-axis before, and the x-axis is equal to zero. So you've been doing this, you just didn't know you were doing this. Okay, so let's do Find the area between y equals secant squared x and y equals sine of x from 0 to pi over 4. So the first thing you have to do on the test is to graph this curve. Whoops. And that is going to look like a parabola. And then I'm going to graph the sine graph. And the sine graph looks like this. And they want you to integrate this from 0 to pi over 4. So they only want this part of the graph, basically. So they want you to integrate from 0 to pi over 4. The top graph, the top graph is this one, minus the bottom graph, which is the sine of x, and then put a dx. The antiderivative of secant is tangent. And the antiderivative of a negative sine is cosine of x from 0 to pi over 4. The top, you put in the pi over 4 here, and you put pi over 4 here, and the tangent of pi over 4 is 1, plus the cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, minus the tangent at 0 is 0, And then the cosine at 0 is 1. So you're going to get 1 plus the square root of 2 minus 1, which ends up being the square root of 2 over 2. And that is the area between 0 to pi over 4 without using a calculator. OK, let's keep doing this. 
And I'm going to try to not use a calculator throughout the section, see what we can do. So the first one I'm going to do is the first step. These are the steps, maybe, to help you do this section. The first thing you have to do is graph. Because you need to figure out what is top and which one is the bottom one. Then you need to figure out what your um, limits are. And then you need to anti-derive or you need to integrate to solve the area. Okay, so 2 minus x squared is a parabola that, that is facing down like this. Y equals 2 minus x squared. That's a parabola facing down. Um, up, it just got shifted up to, or got shifted up to. This one is a line, y equals mx plus b. It starts at 0, and it has a negative slope. So it looks like this. And you always are trying to find the area in the enclosed figure. And the enclosed figure is this right here. OK, so far we've got the picture. And I know that this is the top graph, and this is the bottom graph. So I'm integrating the top part, 2 minus x squared. This is the top graph, minus the bottom graph, which is a negative of a negative x, dx, which is the same thing. I'm going to put them in the right order. A negative x squared plus x plus 2 dx. Okay, the bad thing is I still have to find my limit. So how do I find my limit? Without a calculator, I would have to set the two equal to each other. So I'm going to set them equal to each other. 2 minus x squared has to equal a negative x. I'm going to bring everything over to the right side. Whoops, it's a negative x. Positive x squared minus x minus 2 x minus 2 and x plus 1. So x equals 2 and x equals a negative 1. So from a negative 1 to a positive 2, from a negative 1 to a positive 2 is where I'm going to integrate. So the antiderivative is x to the third divided by 3 plus x to the second divided by 2 plus 2x from a negative 1 to 2. I'm going to put 2 in there. When I plug 2 in there, I'm going to get a negative 8 thirds plus 4 plus 2. Plus 2 plus 4. That's when I plugged in the number 2 minus. I plug in a negative 1, I get a positive 1 third plus 1 half minus 2 here. This is when I plugged in the negative 1, the number negative 1. And it's going to end up being 4.5 units squared when you put all six numbers together. Now let's do another one. Find the area between y is equal to 1 half secant squared t and y is equal to a negative 4 sine squared t. So what I did is I used my calculator on this one, and I graphed this, which is this, and I graphed this, whoops, get rid of that, which is this, and they want it from a negative pi over 3 to a positive pi over 3. It should be right in here. So I'm going to integrate from a negative pi over 3 to a positive pi over 3, and the top is 1 half secant squared t minus the bottom, which is a negative 4 sine squared t dt. And I'm going to use my calculator on this one. Um, they they're going to let you know when to use your calculator and when not to use your calculator. So you should get 4.189 um, units squared if you use your calculator to solve that problem.
Another way you could do this, if you have, you could just integrate from zero to pi over three, that same thing. And you could see that they're the same on either side, just multiply by two. That's another way you could do it. So, okay, the next one. How do you find the area with respect to y now? This is something new. So, if your curves look like this, you're going to find the area um, from some y value to some y value. And this will be some f of y minus g of y, dy, which is not top minus bottom. It's right minus left. This is the right part. And this would be the left curve. And you're integrating from some y value some, from some y value, which you've never integrated before. So we're going to do another one on the next page. Right minus left instead of top minus bottom. So find the area when x equals the cube root of y and x equals y squared minus 2. So how do you do this? So we have always done it the opposite way throughout all of math. We've always had it y equals and y equals. Well, this is the first time, I think, in math where it's now x equals and x equals. So first of all, x equals the cube root of y. If I want to get y alone, I'm going to cube both sides. So doesn't y really equal x cubed? These two are the same. One is x is alone, and one is when y is alone. When y is alone, I need to graph it. And this is what it would look like on a graphing calculator. It's the same equation. Same thing with this one. x equals y squared minus 2. x plus 2 equals y squared plus or minus the square root of x plus 2 equals y. So this one right here is the same thing as this one. So this makes a swoosh to the left, and it's going to be a positive, and it's also going to be a negative. And you see in between here is the area. And do you see that top minus bottom isn't going to work? The top graph, there is no top graph, because do you see this right here? I'm trying to draw it thicker. This is not the top because there are two equations for this. So instead of doing top minus bottom, it's easier to do this problem to do right, left. It's easier to do right minus left. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do right side and the right minus the left. And I have to figure out what my limits are. So I have to set them equal to each other. So my right equation using is um, the cube root of y minus the left side. And the left side is y squared minus 2. Everything needs to be in terms of y if you're going right minus left. Do you see that? And if these are y's, these also have to be y values. So how do you get the y values? Again, I'm just going to set them equal to each other. I'm going to set, or I'm just, you know what? Instead of setting them equal to each other, I'm going to graph both of these. So I'm just going to show you under y1, I'm going to put x to the third. Under y2, I'm going to do the square root of x plus 2. And under y3, I'm going to do a negative x plus 2. Then I'm going to hit the intersect button. And it's going to tell me where they intersect at. And this spot right here on my graphing calculator is going to say a negative 1 and a negative 1. And this spot right here on my gra graphing calculator is going to say 
one five comma one point seven nine three. So my y values are from a negative one to one point seven nine three zero zero three seven. Don't round your limits. Keep your limits all the way out. So let's let's not round your limits. Let's keep them all the way out. Those are the full limits, and that's what you should do here. And now, if you use your calculator, so how do you use your cal calculator? You use your FNINT button and find this. Put in a negative one down here, put in 1.7930037. You have an alpha button, and the alpha button will give you the cube root of y if you want to use the y, minus y squared minus 2dy. Put that all into your calculator and you should get 4.215 units squared. And we have one more section. Find the area of y equals the square root of x, y equals x minus 2, and the x-axis. So this is going to take me a while to show you this. The first thing I'm going to do is graph that y equals x minus 2, I put my first dot at negative 2 and go up 1 and over 1, up 1 and over 1, and it looks like this, and the x-axis. So notice that there's one, this is the first one, this was my second line, and the x-axis is my third line. Do you see that there are three? So there are two methods. This is method number one. You have to decide which way you want to do it on the AP test. I can break it right here, and I can integrate this first section from 0 to 2. The top is the square root of x minus the bottom, which is 0, dx. Plus, I can integrate from 2 to 4. This is going to end up being, the end is the 4 right here. This is going to be 4 comma 2. So I can integrate 2 to 4. The top is the square root of x minus the bottom, which is x minus 2 dx. So that's one method. That's method number one. You can break it up into two. So this is the first one. And this would be the second one. This is the top minus the bottom. This is the top minus the bottom. So this would be one method by breaking it up into two shapes. Shape number one and shape number two. You get two different areas. This is method number two. You're going to get the same answers. The answers are 10 thirds, by the way, three and one third. Method number two is to look at that. And all I'm going to do is do the top minus the bottom. And the top, the top would be this, and the bottom would be this curve. So you could do top minus bottom, or not top minus, right minus left, sorry. Right minus left. You don't want to do top minus bottom. And the right is this. So this is just another method. Method number two would be right minus left. So you would have to work in terms of y in this method. So the right is y plus 2, and the left is a negative y squared. And how I got that was 
it was given to me that it was y equals x minus 2. But you need to get x alone and you get y plus 2. So that's how I got y plus 2. And the same thing with this other one. y is equal to the square root of x. So x is equal to y squared. So that's how I got y squared. And I'm going to integrate from 0 to 2. And if you look at it, my y value is 0 up to my y value 2. So I'm integrating from 0 to 2 y plus 2 minus y squared dy. So this is method number 2. This is right minus left, and you only need 1 to do this one, and you still get 10 thirds. So showing you that you could integrate this one two different ways, this one's in terms of x, and the other one's in terms of y. And that's all the notes for 8.2.